we developed a model uh, that is able to detect epidemics or conditions that precipitate malaria epidemics two to four months before the events occur. Now, this uh, model is rather unusual. It is not a statistical model. It is what we call a process-based model. Uh, it, it, it actually depends on the biology of mosquitoes and, and the parasites and how they interact with temperatures and rainfall. So the model uh, uh, is based on a small program that we have uh, uh, done on a computer that identifies um, weather conditions that uh, support the development of parasites, the mosquito populations that precipitate malaria epidemics. Well, there are three lines of evidence which we'd like to present to, to uh, those who are interested in this uh, subject. One a is that there was malaria in uh, the Western Highlands of East, Western Kenya and in fact East Africa in the early 30s and 40s. Now, if you go back and look at the climate data, you will realize that there was abnormal warming during that period. Now, uh, some people would like to invoke the idea of drug resistance, but then there was no drug resistance. Others would like to invoke the idea of land use change, deforestation. There was no deforestation at that time. The only thing that had changed at that time was uh, uh, warming above normal. Uh, and and, and if, if you have warming above normal, this revs up mosquito populations, it decreases the developmental time of parasites, and that will lead to disease outbreak. The second line of evidence is that we have observed malaria epidemics mainly during El Nino's in the 1990s uh, and uh, into, the, up into the current century. And El Nino's are associated with abnormal temperatures and uh, excess rainfall. And when you look at the data very carefully, you will see that the epidemics uh, invariably follow these events of abnormal warming and uh, very high rainfall in, in the highlands. Uh, formerly, transmission was uh, restricted by temperatures. The third line of evidence is that malaria has moved from uh, western Kenya highlands into central Kenya highlands. That's where I was born. The number was malaria in the 60s, uh, in the 70s, in the 80s. But in the eight, 90s, we started hearing of uh, people who live there getting malaria. At first, we assumed it was because of trouble. But later on, we interviewed people, and they said they had never traveled and they got the disease. So we, we, we traveled around the area, and uh, we, in the uh, last two years, and we found that in many health centers, almost every health center in central Canada, they had records of malaria of local residents who'd never traveled. Uh, we looked uh, at data in some uh, major hospitals, uh, and this was quite uh, common. And, and, and uh, at the same time, some of our uh, colleagues went up to those areas, and they found that the uh, uh, malaria vector and office arabensis was breeding in those areas. Okay, then the, the other thing we had to do now was to look at the climate data uh, and, and when we, we, we analyzed this we found out that at just about 1993 the local temperatures went above 18 degrees, 18 degrees uh, uh, that is the uh, mean annual temperatures Below 18 degrees, you cannot have malaria transmission uh, simply because uh, the parasites take too long to develop in the malaria mosquito and the malaria mosquito will die before the parasite can be transmitted. But above 18 degrees, the parasite can develop mature and be transmitted by the female mosquito before the end of its uh, lifespan. So 
uh, you can see an upward increase of temperatures from the 1960s, 70s, 80s into the 90s until where the uh, uh, average annual mean temperature crossed the 18 degrees threshold in 1993 and that's when we started hearing cases of malaria in uh, Nyeri, Karatina, Naromoro uh, and uh, th th this, this is totally consistent with the biology of transmission. Those who uh, uh, you know, invoke doubt have, are not offering any explanation as to why the disease is moving into new areas in the highlands and why the disease tends to spike during you know, unusual weather events such as El Nino's. Uh, now, we are talking about very large segments of population. In uh, Tanzania, we have 23% of populations at risk of epidemics. In Kenya, about uh, quarter per 25% of the population is at risk. In Uganda, 13% of the population is at risk. So, these are not uh, minor uh, figures. Uh, if you ignore this uh, line of evidence, you, you run into uh, serious risk of high mobility and mortality in this population. 